Welcome to the No Script Show, uh, where we're doing the annual review episode because I'm too lazy to pick up stuff to talk about this week. And <laughs> yeah, so yeah, um, yeah. As you were pointing out, as my co-host was pointing out, I've been here for a year, and there's there's actually a lot of things that I that I that it's great that he mentioned. There's a lot of stuff that I I I, I want to review and and talk about and all that good stuff. So yeah, it's probably yeah. not going to be that much whiskey rotation. although I was drinking whiskey on, on the Rebel Without a Cause uh, podcast I'm going to still I'm going to still get to that one yeah it's pretty interesting we, we, we talked about uh, a lot about uh, Childerberg which is like the libertarian southeastern uh, festival um, or at least it's slowly becoming that and also uh, about Louisiana Indiana versus FSU football, LSU football versus FSU football, which quick, is mm-hmm. quick, quick question. Quick question for for a non-American: Is it do you have is it a binary option in America? Is it either state football and or college football, or can you like watch both? Or do you? I don't know. If you really, if you genuinely enjoy football, you'll you'll watch both for different reasons. But, because everybody like I fo- that I follow on social media that, that's into football well, obviously lives in the states, but they are either state football or college football. There's there's no crossover there. <laughs> really, that's weird. I mean, the yeah, lot of, weird. most people I know that are really into football are are following both. So mm, I don't know. Uh, it's just something I noticed that it's weird that all the Americans that I follow on social media is either state football or college football. Maybe and they're just the being odd- seasonal because there's there's a season for college football and a season for 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 national football. Like well, during that doesn't a, it match up? Uh, I mean, you yes. guys only have like two weeks of summer, so uh, you only have so much time no, to play out of sports. No, if you live in if you live in like <laughs> The fucking Pacific Northwest or, or in the Montana. Midwest. Like if, if you live in if you live in Minnesota, you have two weeks of, of, of summer. Everywhere else in normal parts of the country, you have you have plenty of summer. And if you live in the Sun Belt, like Arizona, I think Sun Belt, Arizona is still part of the Sun Belt. Then you have perpetual summer. And then and then if you oh, yeah. live in, in like the southeast, uh, south southeast slash center east slash central southeast um like then you have i don't know so if obviously places like florida louisiana florida the whole florabama area so florida louisiana <laughs> Alabama. yeah there's it's like this corridor here like this is if you actually look at it because like the Mike people keep, right on will kick your ass for saying florabama okay <laughs> no it's there's, there's this actual area called florabama like it's it's a real thing like it's it's, it's if, if, for people that live here like there's this because remember like florida is penned in by georgia and alabama and then just mm. over is louisiana mississippi so there's like this area sort of like when you get to areas like mobile pensacola mobile alabama pensacola florida sort of new orleans uh that area that's that's basically florabama it's all like beaches bloxy that's all that's that's one thing that's on my bucket list i want to do a tour of like like the northern part of florida alabama louisiana mississippi georgia that hold the yeah. southern this proper southern southern side that's of the state. Thing. people people riff on the northern part of florida but uh, Honestly, the northern, part of Flo- the northern part of Florida, I kind of prefer because it's actually more southern than mm. like the, the, the southern parts of Florida are more like places like like Miami is, is basically just calif. It's just basically a better run California because it's a red state. But Miami, it's like it's, Cuba, it's, it's, the city itself is, is, is bright blue, bright blue. But it's a, it's a better run California basically. It's it's it, and it's, Miami uh, is is Cuba with democracy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> basically. So when you get to places like Boca Raton, Miami, Port Charlotte, all that, Tampa, it's actually you know what I'm not going to rip up on Tampa. Shout out to Tampa Bay. It's just the greatest city in Florida right I'm, now. I'm, uh, with I'm glad you bring up Tampa, Odin. I'm glad you bring up Tampa. February. Yeah. Okay, is the Monster Jam in Tampa Bay? 
Uh, what is the once a gem and why should I care about it? Oh, come on. I, I, th- I, I see these, these, these monster truck videos. Yes. I'm like, what is... Yes. Why am I... Why would I go to a... Why? I didn't, why? I didn't tr- trust me. Just, why just do, we do, do it. These just do it. Ourselves? If you enjoy football, you will love the monster jam. It is absolutely freaking epic. You're talking it's, about a two and a half meter high vehicle putting out in excess of a thousand horsepower, doing backflips and shit. What more do you want in life, dude? Cheap booze and lots of horsepower. You can't go wrong. Live a little, dude. I mean, <laughs> like, wait, isn't, wait, February's my spring break, man. Mm, exactly. See, I've, I've checked it out. Tampa Bay, by the beach. And is spring break 2022. Jamie, pull that up. <laughs> yeah, I know. we don't we don't make that kind of money. We're not uh, we're not a uh, we're not the stream of consciousness or man patriot shit. By the way, what well, since we're discussing man patriot, uh, I I'm taking this moment to say unequivocally, um, fuck man patriot as as a crew, as as people, as a podcast. And if you want to be down with them, then fuck you too. I, I'm officially starting a podcast beef because I'm insulted by Duo's need to 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 post Instagram videos of, of his new intro. Like he's so much better. Like, don't you hate it when somebody's like that? Like, oh, I'm I'm look at me, I'm doing all this work. Like, I'm so much better. Fuck you, Duo. Well, fuck you and your intro. Fuck your podcast <laughs> and all your crew. I am officially starting a podcast beef. Well, well, I actually quite like it because it, it's better quality production that I can watch, and I don't know. I have to do wow. it myself. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wow. a procrastinator, okay? Wow. Wow. Okay. Right. All right. Cool. Okay. Um, but, but, but so we're tying you in February Monster Jam in Tampa Bay. What is I don't even know when spring Odin. break is. I don't, what uses it? I have a buddy, I have a friend that stays in stays in the states, but mm-hmm. I can't live vicariously through him. Come on. Uh, when is spring break? I can't see where spring break. Da, 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 spring break dates by you. Uh, uh, let's see. Oh. Uh, just just for everybody so that they know, this is a, a, a lecturer assistant that doesn't know when spring break is. Well, I'm, I'm actually <laughs> doing work. Um, spring break for us is actually March. It's March. You're gonna make you you can, you can afford most schools to do... in, in, in most universities is actually March. Okay, well, okay. There's four dates for next year in Florida. March, you don't even March, have to go out of March, state. March, 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 March. Yeah, it's all in March. It's only if you go to like some, some like douchey like northeastern college where it's like Boston College is like twenty seventh of February to sixth of March, but I mean like shout out shout out to 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 uh, University of Michigan though having February to 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 March sixth as 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 their spring break because I happen to know something about Michigan weather and like. Good luck enjoying that 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 <laughs> spring break in March, in February in, in Michigan. Like, dude, I, I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm not even there. I know it's a it's a bad idea. What power to you? It's actually University of Michigan, Central Michigan. Let's see where else. Uh, Kane University. Yeah. Wow. All these Michigan schools are having. Wow. I mean, shout out to them. Like. You can suffer if you want to. I don't think it's a great idea, but hey, you it's your it's state. Good. Do whatever you want. It's your state. February That's in Michigan is basically still winter. Hey man, that is the point of fe- federalism. It's your state. Do whatever <laughs> you want. I think it's a dumb idea, but you do you. You have your spring break in February, late February. Um that's that's on them. That's on there. Yes, it, it's like, can, can you imagine having spring day at Tiki's in July? Exactly. That's exactly what yes. it is. Yes. That's exactly mm-hmm. what it is. That's exactly what it is. All right, cool. I mean, 
that's on you. That's on you, Michigan. I, um, <laughs> I see. Uh, I was I was actually on um, Instagram. I mean, not Instagram, Twitter today, and I see uh, my my old pal Glassman uh, posted a video that's just full of cringe, and it's it's by this. I think, Ian Miles Chong post. I'll I'll post it in the chat, but it's the most. I'll probably add it to the description. But it's the most cringe, like choir sing along thing. It, they're just bad at singing. Like it's it, it's um that turn around every now and then. I feel a little bit lonely. Song. I can't remember what it is. Ooh. What's the name of the actual song? But it's turn around. It, yes, you know I the know song. Exactly. I know the song. Um, and I need you now forever, blah, blah, blah. I can't remember the name of the song. I've heard it a million times. But anyway, um, something, something, needing you forever. Anyway, the point is, it's this, it's this Aussie uh, girls choir. But I'm like, <sighs> first of all, the, the acoustics of where they chose to do this are terrible. And I'm not a, a singing person. And second of all, they're just not good at it. But I pointed out to him. To, to, to glass fan that like like I'd like to point out that one of them is wearing an Ohio jersey poverty pestilence famine this if it's bad you can bet Ohio has a finger in the pie and once okay. again I was right Ohio had a okay. finger in the pie because somebody's wearing an Ohio jersey in this not only is it Ohio but Australia to blame I guarantee you if there is some darkness or evil one of those sovereign areas has something to do with it guarantee okay. you all right, and the song in question is uh, Total Eclipse of the Heart by Bonnie Tyler. That's it, yeah. So that's 70s hairdo to the max. There we go. <laughs> that's it, that's it. I actually feel kind of bad because one of the senators from Ohio uh, started following me the other day on Twitter, and I feel super bad about <laughs> talking shit about Ohio. <laughs> Shit's got Ohio. Um, no, I'm not even kidding. Uh, I can't remember. Uh is it Cleveland in Ohio? Yes. Ah, you know what show I'm referring to, don't you? Uh, no, actually, because there's quite a few shows. Oh, dude. With the, uh, what's his name? He did the, whose line is it anyway? Oh, um, Drew Carey. Drew Carey, yes. He had the Drew Carey show. Oh, because they said something about Cleveland Rocks. Cleveland Rocks, yeah. Except it doesn't. It's just horrible. It's just horrible. I, I, I mean, look, I would... I, but I actually pointed this out, and since we're dunking on other people in other states, because I, I enjoy this, because it's like a cathartic moment. Because every day I wake up, it's like, I kind of sit here and think, okay, how many hours can I go today before I encounter somebody talking shit about the state of Florida? I mean, that's just like, that's just the, the de facto you have to live with. Um yeah, but you, you've got Florida man and Florida woman, so. Yeah, but that's Ought because be of sunshine that. laws. It's it's because of sunshine laws. Like, crazy shit goes on elsewhere. It's just because we have the sunshine laws that everything is so public. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so. Okay, but okay, but what, honestly, what is your least, okay, excluding the obvious ones, New the, the, the biggies, New York, California, and Washington, what's your least favorite state? Uh, least favorite state, Georgia. Why? Uh, it's our rival state. Okay, yeah, but like legit, not not football orientated. Like. No, not football. Just like state rivalry, just Florida uh, and Georgia. Just okay. hate each other. Uh, but uh, but uh, that that's about it. I mean, but for me personally, outside of state rivalry. Uh, It's still Ohio for me. It's still. Ohio. It, yeah, it's okay. Just... I don't have I don't have that much experience with the states, but Minnesota, but purely for the accent. Oh no! I don't say that. One of my favorite people on on Twitter is from Minnesota. <laughs> Who's that? Uh, uh well, she's actually changed her 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 tag now, but it used to be Jamie something. I think it is Jamie still. Uh yeah. Jamie twenty twenty one eighty one. On Jamie, if you hear this, I, I, I love your Minnesota accent. It's very Minnesota <laughs> mom. 
Or sushi kind of hot. Uh, also, she's no kind of hot, but, but oh. she's kind of hot though. So that's that's probably why. Minnesota, I, 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 that Minnesota accent almost sounds like a like a bargain a basement bargain Canadian accent. <laughs> well, they they they're basically Southern Canada. <laughs> they are. <laughs> they're basically Southern Canada. Uh, and then I guess yeah. Then like then there's like this great chasm that is like the heartland and nobody really feels any type of way about nebraska or i mean kentucky kentucky's cool uh nebraska, nobody feels any type of way about nebraska because, uh, we lost, i mean we lost you hear any news coming out of wyoming wyoming sorry it's an entirely artificial state remember <laughs> no i'm not kidding that's why its borders are perfectly square because they just like they were, they made all these other states around it, and then they're like, "Fuck it, we've got this plot of land, square it off, and make it a state." And now you've got the state of Wyoming, perfectly square borders. Um, like nobody feels any kind of way about Wyoming or Nebraska. I, I mean, unless well, you live in the Midwest, you don't really care about Iowa or Missouri. Um, but actually, so those are the states that the Americans, that the people should actually worry about. They feed the freaking nation, dude. Because yeah. most of your agriculture is there. There's a unbelievable amount of agriculture there. In the middle of nowhere. That's true. Um, so, other, yeah. but other, other topic, quick question. How do you feel about um, uh, old uh, 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 Sleepy Joe? Wishing everybody a, a, a winter of death and destruction. Get into that in a minute, actually. I'll, I'll get, <laughs> I just want to point out that recently on, on Twitter, there was this thing um, where people were posting about New York pizza uh, uh -huh. and how great it is. First of all, I've had New York pizza. Not that great. Like, Chicago, Chicago can do, probably do better. Uh, like, and here's the thing about New York, right? It's a lovely city. It's just filled to the brim with New Yorkers. I'm allowed to say that. <laughs> um, I know people that live there. And there's an entire state outside of New York City that, that both Americans and foreigners need to explore because it is wonderful. The state of New York, upstate New York, is just beautiful. The Catskills Mountains, the people, the land, everything. But there's just this garbage heap that is New York City that just stinks up everything else. New York City annoys me, particularly because it's like the city. I mean, it's it's this high tech city. It is a financial capital. It's also too, it's also bought a little bit too much into its own hype. Like they're just always talking about how great New York is. It's like the kid in high school who couldn't stop telling you how many beers he had or girls he hooked up with over the weekend at the house party. Nobody cares, dude. You're trying too hard. Who are you trying to convince here? Us or you? Because I've been to New York. I spent a lot of time in New York City and outside of it in upstate New York. New Yorkers are constantly trying to convince themselves that it's great because it's actually not that great. Overpriced as shit, unless you live in a very high-priced part of Manhattan. Overpriced as shit, overpopulated as shit, fucking way too hyped pizza, garbage sports teams. I, I made a tweet about it. They should rename the fucking Midwest from, you know, Michigan and Ohio to New York City because everything about New York City is just mid. It's just so <laughs> mid, and they try to hype the crap out of it. <laughs> But it is, you get the same, look at Western Cape, it's Cape Town. Cape and and Town the thing is, nobody would be pissed at them if they didn't have to be so boisterous about it. Like, if you just I mean, said, hey, it's a great town, but it's just in your face. Yeah, it's but just, I, can't, I can't think that it's it's any fun at all to live in New York City. It's just, it's too crowded. It is it's just too crowding. People. Doesn't like e even if you you are someone who's never lived there. It's like, don't you think it's kind of weird how people are always talking about how great it is? Like, who are they trying to convince here, them or us? Yeah. The lady yeah. does protest too much. Yeah, it's just like garbage heap. But anyway, um, <laughs> yeah. So the White House is messaging. Um, all I have to say is. That's a bold strategy, Joe. We'll see how that works out for you. <laughs> In terms of death and disease. Okay. It's a, yeah. 
it's Bold almost strategy. like it's, it's almost like they don't have uh, um, the midterm elections next year. Yeah, uh, I mean, <laughs> I mean, at this point, it's like because I mean, again, I live in one of the oldest, oldest states in America per capita. Like, there mm. are only people aged like 45 and under here and 80 year olds. Like, yeah. there's not a lot of 55 year olds in Florida. It is. It Every, is the retirement state. <laughs> it's either 45 and under. Or like 80 that's it so you'd think we we'd get absolutely bodied by covid and to a certain extent we did but in terms of deaths per capita considering our our population and the population of new york like it's actually i mean florida is like last time i checked ranked right in the middle of the pack of all the states in yeah. terms of deaths per million and i mean all we did was effectively said we effectively said, okay, shut off all the old people. And I mean, genuinely shut, up, shut them off. Don't like ship them back into nursing homes if they're COVID positive. I'm looking at you, Andy, Andy Como. Um, oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, so shut off all the nursing homes so that they, they're sealed off. The rest of you live free. And yeah, I guess there's a certain laser of fair to that that was kind of wild. I mean, but realistically, I think a lot of you know, mayors and governors here realize if you genuinely think you're going to stop the 21 year olds of the state of Florida from partying, like there's a bridge in Brooklyn I can sell you for like ten dollars if you believe yeah. that. <laughs> Just realize the reality of the situation. And yes, we had sky high infection rates, but the infection rate doesn't count for Jack, dude. That's and this is the part that I'm I've been trying to get through to people. <sighs> The fixation on infection rate is the wrong fixation. I care more about hospitalization and death rate, and obviously more death than hospitalization. But honestly, we should care about hospitalization rate as well. But like, if this thing infects 90, 90 people, sorry, 100 people, and only, let's say, eight get what? hospitalized and two die, those two that died are a tragedy. It's still not less a, of a concern a, to me. Yeah. Hmm? So is, I, is I don't it, care. Like it's, it's, not it's, not, a, it's not a catastrophe. Yeah, but it's, um, it's not like speaking of if, of 50, if it infects a hundred and fifty die, then I'm like, okay, yeah. now it's a problem. But uh, talking about dystopian states, do you see what New Zealand did now? Uh, they passed the, they passed a law that people that are in ICU with COVID that has a very that's judged deemed to have a very low chance of survival may be euthanized because they they legalized euthanization euthanization about a month ago or so so now they passed law that if you are in hospital with covid and it seemed like oh you're not going to recover they can euthanize you yikes and yikes. I'll, I'll, I'll i'll top that i'll top that england went and passed uh, their NHA, uh, National Health Insurance, passed, uh, got uh, laws passed through Parliament that they are going to give mentally, um, I'm retarded, for lack of a better word, uh, children under 18, the option of signing a DNR so that if they get COVID, that or, it's not just for COVID, it's for anything. So any... Um, uh, all the kids that's on the NHI under the age of 18 gets offered to sign a, a DNR that do not resuscitate. Now, just to just to drive this home, these are kids that are deemed by the state not mentally capable of looking after themselves, but they're allowed to sign a DNR. It's a big yikes for me, um, but it, <laughs> does, it also doesn't surprise me because, you know, it, yeah, we all know there, there, there's uh, one of the people who most recently put it perfectly is is, is old Ben Shapiro when he said, you know, one of the biggest problems with with socialized. Well, he, he's got two great points on it is that and I and I subscribe to him is that when it comes to healthcare, you can either have it universal 
you can have it cheap and you can have it good and it can only ever be two of those three two things at any yeah. it, and, and if you try to make it all free then you end up with a disaster which is what's happening to the united states healthcare system right now in the last mm. 20 40 60 years or so in the, in the last 60 years or so they they said you know what screw it we're going to try and make it all three because you pre- previously it was good and cheap uh, but not universal. But, you know, you also had a society in the United States where people looked after each other a lot more. Mm-hmm. Um, you had stock fells or, or church groups or whatever, you know, you know, so even though it wasn't universal, it was universal by virtue of, you know, people looked after each other. Mm-hmm. And then in the sort of atomized hyper individualized world it not being universal became a problem but that's besides the point so that's the one good point he has on it the other thing is um when it comes to healthcare let's say it's magically working and it's wonderful as is it as it is apparently in canada so well that they have droves of them flying to the u.s to do uh, <laughs> procedures every year or as it is apparently in england or new zealand the, at the end of the day, no matter how well it works, in any situation like that, there was that heartbreaking thing of what was his name, Baby Alfie or something, where the state mm. in, in England took him off life support, and people in America were like, yeah, he could live, like no problem. Like it's just yeah. that the NHS decide, and that's that's the other thing. Old Shapiro pointed out brilliantly is that the state now controls who gets to live and die. Yep. Who gets to live and die? And that highlights one point. Universal healthcare run by the state is evil, as simple as that. It's yes. inevitably going to get to the point where the state says, okay, this class of citizen, we don't we don't deem them viable to keep alive. I mean, can you imagine in America if they said, Okay, if you if you if you, if, you, if the doctors deem you not you're not gonna pull through from of the of pneumonia brought on by a flu virus now we're going to euthanize you it, it's it's ridiculous it's absolutely ridiculous especially if you consider like new zealand opted to legalize euthanization euthanization over marijuana so uh, and that's the thing uh, right is is that <laughs> you know you new zealand that's the other thing with euthanization is that it creates a I assume the doctors who do this are, are paid. I can't imagine that they're doing it for free. I don't know. Paid, obviously, obviously paid. They're, I mean, they're paid. Even if it's free, they're paid by the state. So now you are creating a financial, uh, and I assume it can. It, it's one of the more expensive things to do is to is to have a doctor, you know, medically euthanize someone because they've got to be there, make sure it's painless, and blah 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 blah. So you're now creating a financial incentive for doctors to kill people. Mm. Know, it's, it's one is a financial incentive. And the other one is you, you open the door for doctors to exercise their biases. So if they've got some kind of gripe with old people or poor people or black people or yellow people or whatever, they can just say, oh, no, yes, he's not going to pull through, euthanize him. Yeah. It's it's a it's a, a slippery slope of notes. It's just it's ridiculous that <laughs> that it's allowed to happen. It's really s- staggering, and the 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 UK one is actually sort of worse for me because on the one hand they're saying okay this group of people are not fit to look after themselves to make their own decisions, but we're gonna we're gonna let them sign away their uh, their lives. Yeah, that uh, I mean, yeah you're gonna have to show me the workings on that one. Chief. I mean, if if you can if you can check at, at modern medicine, uh, there's a lot of scenarios where people are easily resuscitated. When they are technically dead, they can they can resuscitate them, and they can recover and they can go on to live for decades. Um, but then I think mentally retarded children sign DNRs. It's just it's ridiculous. It's well, it's the same as some of this uh, some of the countries, and some of the the states and. USA, where they say, okay, no, the kids can come for vaccinations, uh, minors can come, can go for vaccinations without the parents' consent. It's just, it's absolutely yeah, but you can't ridiculous. Give them, you can't give them like aspirin without their parents' consent. Yeah, I mean, it's just in the same ridiculous. state, you can't give them like aspirin <laughs> without their parents' consent. Mm. Uh, like, yeah. uh, gonna have to show me the workings on on that one, chief. 
the the mental gymnastics that people are going through with this with this uh um, with the spicy uh, cough the spicy cough is um it's really ridiculous <laughs> it is absolutely fucking staggering it really is it's just i mean look i and again my my i've always said hey if you want to get if you want to get vax get vax my uh, the only thing yeah. i've ever openly opposed here publicly anywhere is 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 mandates of any kind and passports of any kind but, yeah, like i the same always the, the, what, the way i see it if it was if it's a legitimate threat to public health you wouldn't have to coerce and bribe and force people to get the vaccine for the disease yeah. people didn't and, argue to get the polio vaccine people didn't yeah. argue to get the measles vaccine okay it's yeah. not necessary because if your relatives start dropping one by one because of the disease, you're going to take a vaccine that they offer you. But if you take with a, with a spicy cough, I mean, take me for instance, I've lost more people, more relatives, um, and people that I know have died of lack of treatment at hospitals because of COVID regulations than have died of COVID. Because I, I literally not one of the no one I know have know have died of COVID. But I, I think the tally is now at like six. That's I, either I actually died of uncle. lack of treatment. Oh, lack yeah? of treatment. No, I I have an uncle who did, but I also point out that same said uncle was uh, pretty deep in his chemotherapy treatment. So maybe he yeah. kind of had a. Uh, a pre-existing condition that made him unlikely to survive any kind of infection any any flu whatsoever i yeah. mean and i've had um not direct relatives in-laws indoor relatives die because they didn't get treatment at hospitals because of covid regulations or they were sent home instead of being kept in the hospital because of covid regulations and suicides because of covid regulations killing their businesses stuff like that so yeah and then you have governments going just absolutely bonkers. I mean, how how can you expect a 13-year-old to make an informed decision to take a vaccine? That's experimental. It, it, it makes no sense whatsoever. None whatsoever. And again, I'm totally down for people who want to take it. Yeah, like, I mean, if, if, if you're an adult and you, made the, you decide you want to take it, then yeah, I, you go for it. Don't force me to do it. But anyway, yeah. Do you have any tech topics, Aaron? I I don't, but I I I did say uh, I I wanted to discuss. Yeah. Oh, and the other thing is, um, hmm. apparently, there's like a lot of uh, drama on on American Liberty Twitter, and I don't know what it's about. Apparently. Uh, some dude so that there there's like t- drama about people taking people home too drunk to say yes or no there's drama about people doxing people i'm like i'm like most of the people in liberty twitter are aged somewhere between 25 and 45 and have kids i'm like you guys got out of high school to replay high school really <laughs> really Dude, i, I- I stopped. I like followed Liberty Twitter for a while, and then it's just like, okay, now this this drama is just too much. I mean, a lot and of my just, friends, is, yeah, yeah uh, I, I kind of have to. I was just like, I saw, yeah, I saw one thing where a uh, uh, lady took her husband. She to court. She she made a case to the police because she consented to some sort of sexual act. Uh, so she, she consented that her husband might perform some sexual act that didn't specify what while she was asleep. Okay. Then she woke up and he was doing something else that she didn't consent to. And then the court said, okay, cool, but that's basically right because there was no consent. Um, and that I think that's where the whole Liberty Twitter thing kicked off on. Because they're saying, okay, but yeah, she consented to this. When the, 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 some people say, okay, but she, was, she couldn't consent to anything apart from that. And it was a whole, but it's one of those weird fringe kind of scenarios. So it's not something that you're going to encounter every day. But yeah, it's a, 
that's a weird environment, dude. Liberty uh, Twitter is really one of those strange places. I don't know. Bro. Yeah, so I was just like, okay, cool. Like, <laughs> I, I left high school for a reason. Like, I have no desire to to hop back in. But uh, you guys, so anyway, you, I've been in you, Florida. You guys, you and the coolest, of things coolest people. You realize you. that. Um, I'm, uh, I'm going to be here vibing. <laughs> Um, the the I I I change about the US. There's not a lot, especially about you know the southern US uh, states type thing. Um, and like there there are certain things though. Like first of all, the metric system is just it's just so much better. Like I refuse to use Fahrenheit and miles. It's just it's garbage. It sucks. It's just so unwieldy to use. It's utterly scientific and uh, un- utterly unscientific. Um, and, and it's just in its sort of arbitrary. Like there's 12 feet in a in a in a yard, and then there's uh, like 30, 80 yards in in a mile or something like that. I'm just like, what? No, he just just no. You know, so that is the one thing about the states that I would say, like, you should be like the rest of the world that like, okay, okay, come on. Now you're just being, now you're just being stubborn about this. Like this, this is the one, like when people are like, America should have, you know, um, healthcare like the rest of the world or whatever, like the rest of the world. I'm like, no, no, that's, no, they shouldn't. They absolutely shouldn't. But the measurement system, like, just get over it. Um, The driving... Yeah, that's right. mm-hmm. Well, technically, the official measurement system for the USA is the metric system. Yeah. Just the people just refuse. They want their freedom units. That, that's what they want. Freedom units. Okay. Um, the same reason why they drive on the left-hand side of the road as well. Well, I mean, that, that I'm fine with. Like, because the car steering column is on the other side. That I can live with. It's just the measurement systems that drive me insane. But do you know why they... Um, and and they always... Why, but do you know why they drive hmm? on the left-hand side of the road? Why? Because England drives on the right-hand side of the road. Wow, that's that's cheap it's, pettiness. Uh, it's, it's except literally for the mail cars. Yeah, so it's just... it's. Basically, just because after the the Revolutionary War, they just said, "Okay, well, England, that's this way. We're going to do it the other way." I mean, the mail mail delivery trucks have have their have their well, they at least have their steering columns on the right side of the of the road. Yes. Yeah, but that's uh, they have the, to make deliveries and stuff. Yeah, it make it easier. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's probably that and. Then um, I, and I I hmm? I don't think you understand how petty the, the the U.S. was after the Revolutionary War, because at the time of the Revolutionary War, um, England used the imperial system, um, and then America said, okay, no, 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 we're going to use the SAE system. So if you your sizes was like quarter inch, three quarter inch, like that, in, in, that's the imperial system. America used a different system, the SAE system, so they would have like in between sizes of England. They were and they drove just said, okay, we're gonna drive on the underside of the road. Just because you drive on the on the left, we're gonna drive on the right. That's it. They extreme pettiness and they just never let it go. It's just I mean even if uh, I happen to know if you serve in the military in the US, you know the metric system pretty well because you have to yeah. coordinate with your NATO allies, so it, hap- it it pays to know how to measure things in kilometers and meters. So it, there is living proof that you can you can actually convert to that system. It's just it's even it's, even NASA found out the hard way. It's better to use the metric system than the than the yeah. system. When you blow up space probes <laughs> and stuff, multi billion dollar space probes because you wanted your freedom units and my mates here are always always like well well we use it well and they 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 always go back to old faithful which is units used by nations that have put people on the moon and now my standard sort of de facto response is yeah you units used by 
people who've put people on the moon and also people who surrendered to rice farmers and 8th century goat herders. <laughs> um, so, you know. Oof. I don't Oof. want to go to the moon so bad that I have to surrender to rice farmers and then a decade and then a generation later to 8th century goat herders. I just but it, it's 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 really is one of those weird things because if you you go to any ex-military guy in, in the states and you say okay this place is so many clicks in that direction he's going to know exactly what you're talking about yeah but they know the, the 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 metric system it's just that on the ground level they refuse to accept it. It's like gallons who but that rests another weird thing even in, in like um england they still, because they, they use the metric system for most things, but certain things, they still cling to the, their old imperial system. So you'll still hear them talking about a gallon of fuel instead of a liter of fuel, for some reason. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, they're, yeah, they're, they're a bizarre, like, uh, <laughs> sort of, sort of mixture of both, but they, they le- they lost literally to like what 16th century farm farmers with brown bass rifles or whatever. So you know, there's that. Uh, it, so, me. So, so yeah, uh, the other thing that I would change though is to just like teach Americans that it is possible to put something other than fucking pepperoni on your pizza. Like it is possible. I know it's the wild concept. But you can put things other than fucking pepperoni on your pizza. I think that's where South Africa is good. We've got a we've got a huge variety of toppings on our pizzas. Yeah, it's just, it's just like oh my god. I, I was I was I was at Publix today, which is like a religion in the south. It's, it's the Publix shopping chain. It's I was at Publix today. It's just like try find. It's either. Your, your two options are like you will find 600 varieties of sugar, but you will find two options for pizza: fucking frozen pepper. And 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 I know if you go to an actual pizza joint, you'll get like multiple m- more options. But still, generally, most of those options involve pepperoni and and or, and or salami. I'm just like, okay, cool, guys. I'm in Publix, which is a pretty big grocery chain. Or, or I mean, they're grocery farmery, pharmacists, liquor chain, whatever. And uh, like the, the frozen pizza aisle, it's fucking pepperoni and roast vegetables. Nobody but the saddest human beings on planet Earth is going to have an all roast vegetable fucking pizza. Okay, I'm already in for the, for the for the for the bread and the cheese. Why would I not just go the whole hog and and get some actual meat on my pizza? Pineapple, some ham. Yeah, but so it's either that or six hundred different brands of pepperoni. Like this is the best pepperoni. I'm like, it is possible to put things other than pepperoni on your pizza. I know it's a wild concept, but you can. It's pretty well, wild that's concept. Other, but you can. That's the other thing that's not, that's big in the US. Well, it seems to be big in the US, but not in the US. Is the frozen pizzas? Because here you have to like go hunting in the frozen food section for like a Dr. Utka's little skimpy pizza, frozen pizza. We just yeah don't have that frozen pizza. Frozen pizza is a, is, a, is a staple here. Um, so yeah, I guess I guess that. Uh, so what else would I change? Uh, more toppings, uh, measurements. Uh, no, that's. That's about it. Oh, and the bizarre obsession with being six foot tall. I don't understand that. I just, <laughs> it's such a tiny pop. It's, it's a tiny subset of the human population. That's actually like six foot and up. It is. As no, a six foot is the average. Six foot is the average. 1.845 meters. That's the average. The average, if you take the global population, the average is six foot. What? Yes. The average height. No way. Is Since foot. when? I'm five oh, eleven. There's no way that I'm anywhere near the global average. It's the global. Remember, you've got guys like the Dutch that are like six five. Oh, six, okay. Yeah, because you have outliers like. The, the, yes. But like, okay. So average height in Florida. Okay. So let's check out. 
average height by state 2021 worldreview.com okay they seem uh okay so different states yeah, damn north dakota coming in men average height 510 okay uh let me find florida oh shit rhode island i forgot they were even a state They've got to be the most <laughs> forgotten place in the United States. Like, even, like, Iowa. Or in, huh? I thought it was part of New York. I thought it was, no, like, a county in New York. No, Rhode Island is is a state. Who made that dumb decision? Remember, it was part of, it's, I think, uh, original 13 colon. I think it was one of the original 13 colonies. Remember, they all landed on that part of uh, part of the U.S., like that northeastern seaboard. So, like, they they had no idea how big uh, this place was. Remember, so those thirteen little places they landed, they're like, okay, um, yeah, here it is of the thirteen colonies, Rhode Island Royal Charter. Here we go. Royal, 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 Royal Colony of to provide the colony of Rhode Island and Providence plantations. There we go. Because it's all part of that northeastern seaboard. Oh, and they didn't that. realize as they they just they had they didn't realize they had just landed in the tiny northeastern co- corner of a gigantic Big, land mass. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I, I see I'm mistaken. I see that the global average height is 1.69 meters. Okay, that's way less. Than, five, that's way less. eight, five, nine, about. Uh, yeah. Um, but and, uh, Netherlands is the one with the highest, 1.84 meters. So that's basically six foot. For the state of Florida, the average is 510. So I'm around the average. I'm, I'm around the, the, the average median. in Florida. Um, for Arkansas, 5'10". Huh. So the problem with the average is if you guys, like what's that, the, some of the basketball players, they are insanely tall. Yeah, there's, that's why I always tell people you should take both the mean and the median value when you're looking at averages and then look at yeah. like the spread. Like there's various statistical measurements you should take into account when you're looking at it yeah most states are actually around 510 510 511 speaking of spreads do you guys the universities do you guys still use the bell curve for grading you just go on your on, on per student some 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 uh 511 god damn west virginia out there at 511 <laughs> that is oh wow that is whew. Um, some, some, uh, and of course, New York, New York and New Jersey are tall as, uh, short as hell. Um, some, some courses are actually graded on a curve. I, I, I've recently understood it. So basically my understanding of grading on a curve is, is, is that like on average in this course, there will be X amount of A's and X amount of B's and all that. And so when you, when things get curved, um, you need to sort of move it, move things up and down so that so that it fits that number of A's, B's, and C's, which is great if you're generally an underperformer. But if you tend to, on average, be a highly scholastic person like myself, then it kind of means that there's a good chance you get knocked down because not because you didn't earn an A, but because there's just too many people with A's. For example, like I, I really despise the idea of grading a curve because let's say you're in a class of 100 and there should only be 10 A's and 30 people objectively earn A's. You're going to cut down the number of A's by a third just because of this curve grading thing, which 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 means those 20 A's suffer. But then let's say the rest of the A, the rest of the class gets all got F's. So at the cost of 20 hardworking people who objectively earned it, the other 70 people are now going to get like higher grades, regardless of how much yeah. aptitude they displayed. I'm like, what? 
it's a it's a yeah i mean for the for the for like in many circles in america the 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 concept of something being communist or whatever is still a massive insult but i'm like you know for a country where i mean let's be honest it, it's 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 becoming socialist by the day but for a country that prides itself on hard work and all that kind of stuff yeah that is an amazingly communist or socialist way of looking at grading things because i i really would have thought they would have gotten rid of it completely because like you said firstly it punishes the 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 higher uh, people with higher grades but also if you have one or two guys that do really 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 well they the whole class, all the guys in the middle get sponged because it pulls the curve over to the higher side of the of the grading. So yeah, very silly way of of grading. It's just go to the metric system, America. Please, just it's just percentages. It's just, it works. I mean, no, I don't mind that they have the GPA system. I just mind that they that GPA system is attached to a curve in some classes. Yeah. It depends on the instructor. You know, um, I, none of my courses are graded on a curve uh, that that I that I'm participating in, um, and but the other thing is that it's kind of a skewed view in that once you get to sort of a certain level once you get to masters and phd level especially in highly like technical degrees you know it, your your engineering degrees your your applied mathematics uh, computer sciences and all that i think in general the people who take their life in that direction you know are generally going to be pretty hard workers anyway. You like you have to be pretty obsessive to to deal with the kind of, you know, theoretical mathematics there. And they probably, and and this is me just grasping at straws. I'm, I'm just sort of guessing out of thin air why that there why there are less curved grades in in certain types of degrees. I think the people who there who 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 are there just, I mean, they're pretty obsessive. And they, you know, I, I say that as one of said people, they're pretty sort of obsessive about their craft. They, you know, like I say at one point during this this year, my my blood type was was basically gamer subs. You know, so, shout out to gamer subs. It's probably the best. And God, I wish. Like seeing as seeing as we're at a at a at a at a point in the infinite curve where where anything is possible. I love, like I'm speaking this into existence that I somehow get sponsored by gamer subs. It is the best energy drink I've ever had. Um, it doesn't like kick you in the teeth like Monster Energy Drink, like that massive kick you. I mean, look, I like Monster, but like does, that does massive kick, kick you in the teeth. It kind of does. You need to drink more coffee on on the regular. Then it won't bother you that much. Well, it it, it doesn't kick you in the teeth as much and. And with the crash, it doesn't. If I drink as much coffee as I need to, I end up destroying my digestive system because I, because I, end up drinking too much coffee, but and and ruining my teeth. I this is gamer subs. Yeah, okay, it's not an immediate kick in, but it's it's sort of like a it's like a calm drive up a, a, a slowly <laughs> gradiented hill. You know, it's it's much more. So yeah, I I am down for that. Like I will 100% sell out at any to to any degree for a sponsorship from Monster Energy Drinks. I mean not Monster Energy Drinks, Gamer Subs, or or uh, I guess probably Chipotle or Chick Fil A. I, I would. Hey, wait, you're gonna have to send me some of that that Gamer Subs because I haven't seen it in South Africa. Yeah, it's, so I'll. Next time I'm over home, like I'll bring a canister of game, gamer subs. It is delicious, and um, I love it. And it just keeps me going. Like you can, you can, you can have maybe four gamer subs a day, and you'll be absolutely fine. You can pull off a four-hour, four-hour sleep day, no problem. Um, Talk about games, you'd be mm -hmm. a bit of a TikTok. Oh, you, you, you're quite into your gaming, right? I've tried to get back into it, yeah. Because I, I see now there's a company, uh, XPG, that um, 
should be bringing out a new gaming mouse next year with a one terabyte SSD so that you can gaming mouse you, you store your games on the mouse and if you have to go somewhere you just take your mouse with you and all your games is with I, mouse I I don't see why you would do that oh I, I can sort of see it with mean, one terabyte storage capacity in your mouse Okay, but then I'm I'm really interested in how they pull this off because the whole point of 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 installing a game is so that your operating system figures out um you know when you install it like with let's say I mean other operating I know Linux not not withstanding but let's just say regular Windows install like when you, the whole point of installing a game is that Windows puts um these entries into its registry and it it does everything it needs to do in terms of writing writing through sectors on on the hard drives to figure out okay this thing exists on me uh, uh, this is how i get to it like like, that, like i won't go into like the technicalities of it but the whole point of having a a registry in windows and b you know a, a boot t table and all that is mm. to figure out okay this is how i switch on and start running this is where i find everything so if they if they figure i mean look it sounds cool i guess but if they figured out how to make that i just perplexed at how they got around like saying it's installed on your mouse you say and then like like that would be some amazing computer science i'd be so like they, okay that's pretty they, they're aiming to um showcase it next year feb at some of oh, january at some convention um but it's got it's a wired mouse 2.4 gigahertz connectivity so and a terabyte storage, but just I mean just a terabyte storage on your on your in your mouse. It's already and uh, it's quite I impressive. Mean, terabyte drives are getting pretty 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 large now. The 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 real the real thing in storage I'll get to in a second. I'm I'm looking it up this XPG. I still just don't understand how uh, USB C getting integrated storage state to the mouse integrated storage is aren't new but Storage capacity, okay. So you install this to this drive that is that happens to be your mouse. I'm still wondering how it tells Windows, okay, let's say you've got Doom internal or whatever installed on your mouse. How does it tell Windows that? I don't know if it, it, it might be a, a thing where you install it on the game and then when you connect to a new, new uh, PC, it loads it onto the PC. Play on the PC, and then it, before you take it out, you load it back onto the onto the mouse. Your progress back onto the mouse, and then you can take it back home wherever. Okay. Hmm. It's just like interesting, to yeah. but yeah, because I mean the storage part I could see that's easy, no problem, no problem. Did I still install installing I, stuff on a on a mobile drive? I'm like, how do you? Anyway, on did, on like a mouse. I, like, I still miss the old mouse, the old mouses that you had with a ball. In. Okay, so terabyte storage in a mouse, mouse is freaking amazing. For what? Me. Oh, get out of here with your <laughs> trackball crap, bro. Get out of here with that fad. It never should have existed. What? No, that's gross. Those things were oh. awful. You remember how clogged up they used to get? You had to oh, take so all out to clean it. <laughs> oh, that's so gross, trackball ass. There was a dude at a at a gaming tournament who actually placed in like the top 10 with a trackball mouse and i just kept thinking imagine what your life could have been if you used an actual mouse like <laughs> you had to you had to put so much effort in to be good with a trackball mouse and fps game That's yeah awful and then i've got another That's little just... tip tick topic um i see there's a company uh liquid stack that's that's Bring, that's got a new way of pooling servers where they submerge the, the server in a liquid and cool it that way. So they submerge it in a non conductive liquid, uh, boiling point at about 39 degrees centigrade. Um, Wait, so liquid cooling is back? Liquid cooling is back, but not the way that uh, the guys do liquid cooling now, where you 
physically have a little like a heat interchange that your that's on your CPU if you're radiating the fan. They physically submerge the servers, the, your circuit boards and everything in the liquid, and it's hermetically sealed in a like a big container. So the liquid that they use is non-conductive, and it it's the sa same sort of liquid that they use to clean circuit boards with. Okay, so it's non-conductive, non-corrosive. Boils at about 39 degrees centigrade. So, like as you know, with thermal dynamics, your the second a liquid starts to boil, it dissipates an immense amount of, of heat to the the vapors through the steam. So that then gets goes through a condenser and then drips back into the to the bottom. So they actually uh, Microsoft is running um, on their server on their cloud servers, running um, tests on that, and it's looking to give a 35% reduction in energy usage by just taking the whole server and just dunking it into the liquid. Hmm. I thought that was that's. I mean, because that's liquids always exist. Yeah, that sort of liquids always existed. Um, I guess they finally found a way to make it cost effective to like produce a ton of it yeah. that's a problem what's, what's interesting chemical... about this is the company that's that's um pushing this uh, uh liquid stack they actually they started by opening a bitcoin farm in hong kong and but the, the cooling was the big issue for them because this they is... deemed it too expensive for the the cooling for their their mining servers so they looked. They they developed this process with uh, 3M. You know, 3M that does the double-sided tapes and stuff. They apparently oh. make the cleaning liquid as well. So they two phase, all, yeah, two, two phase, phase immersions cleaning that's station. That's that's pretty. That's the biggest leap in um, computer cooling that I've seen since liquid cooling came out. And liquid cooling has been around for yonks now. 4,000 X heat, 4,000 higher heat transfer coefficient. Yeah, yikes! That's actually pretty impressive. Uh, yeah. See that it's in, in in Hong Kong, which is which is like uh, like the fact that that city somehow still exists is a borderline miracle. Someone needs to sell them nukes and a way to deliver it. Beijing. Oh, you, you, Bridget. If if you hear this episode and you you you're not being held by Chinese like uh, security forces, like drop us a DM or something. I'd love to know if you if you're still alive. Um, CM. That's pretty. That's pretty cool, actually. I this like is, that. Yeah, because I mean, in the last two decades, there's I mean, computing power and stuff has increased with leaps and bounds, but the cooling has still been pretty basic fans or liquid cooling which is still air cooling so this is, this is something i think it'll make a massive difference because I mean, 25 to 30 percent reduction in energy consumption on your cooling um, that makes a big difference how long they can because i wonder how long they're going to run with this because given Given the price tumble in 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 weight for orbital launches, it's only a matter of time before we just start putting server farms in space. And yeah, once you put it, cool. what once you yeah, I mean, look. First of all, you don't have to give a damn about polluting space. Uh, well, at least oh, in the well, terms you kind of, of yeah. Well, you you could you 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 could always just slap it on the dark side of the moon that's pretty no cool. you don't that's have to give it no i mean we could just have tons of server farms in orbit of earth like you don't have to give a damn about at least in terms of of gas emissions you don't have to give a damn about polluting space yes. now but i, you, I think you do this... have to give a damn about like junk floating around your planet but but in terms of like co2 emissions you really don't care like you don't have to care that's that's it's yeah, one of the things. I think this will this will in the next ten to twenty years this will become relevant for home PCs or gamers and stuff like that, where your because look as the servers get as your computing power goes up, you eventually that your home computer, your gaming computers, and all of that's also going to get more going to go up with it. 
So at some point, you're gonna cooling is going to become a massive issue for just a basic home computer. It's you're already a massive this. issue. I've, I've yeah, got an MSI yes. laptop right now. It's like yeah. half the heat of my bedroom comes yes. from this machine alone. But that's probably also because I use it to like mine crypto as well. So yeah. So you, point. If, I mean, if you can, this will make a big. Like you said, servers you can put that in space. No problem. Then the, a lot of your heat problem goes away in any case without you having to do much. But for the computers so, well, that not you want to refer. I this might mean, be, it's going to be huge. <laughs> it's not just the heat problem. It's it's also a power problem because if you can power a server in space, as it turns out, it's never nighttime in space. So, yeah. I mean, the, the energy intake is less of a problem if you can get a big enough. I mean, you can make absolutely massive solar. We're talking solar sheets the size of and they're they can be relative i mean obviously there's the issue of micrometeorites but they can be relatively the size of like rhode island or something um texas. pretty 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 cheap even the size of texas like it you can make something that size pretty cheap theoretically um in space and have that as a solar collector and you you get like some really you know unfiltered sunlight all the time First of all, it's on all the time. And second of all, it's uh, completely unfiltered. So um, as opposed to the sunlight that reaches us here. So uh, Talking about space and and micrometeorites, you see they finally launched the the James Webb telescope. Yeah, I I, I make it a rule not to talk about these telescopes until we get first light from them to not jinx them. Yep. But, uh, until we, until I see proper data from it, I, I, I don't discuss it. Like I don't want to jinx <laughs> it. Well, they, they actually got the first images back from it. But did they? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah it's just like a, a random, I can't remember for what nebulous it is, but like a nice little shot of a nebulous that they took with the James Webb telescope. But at least they got it because I remember uh, it was the last episode or the one before that where they they almost dropped it out of the frame that was holding it, out of the, the jig that was holding it. And I wasn't sure when they were going to launch it. But yeah, they launched it. So many, so many issues so far, it's almost unbelievable. That's an but, expensive piece of tin foil. Um, yeah, interesting. Maybe they can aim it at, at uh, was it... Uh, KIC 28 whatever thing because it started acting weird again so we'll see yeah I, 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 I still have 50 bucks riding on that's an alien construction okay as I, as I said before and I yeah well originally okay so originally from a physics standpoint what we thought it was is yes it's dimming because of some sort of construction then we figured out there's a lot of dust and stuff around there and stuff passing between us. And now, again, it's kind of changed in that it's it's usual dimming is about is um, it's like 20 percent or something silly like that. But now it's kind of just like dimmed by like a couple of percent, one or two or three percent and stayed constant there for very long periods of time before brightening again. And you, if you if you look at it through through a telescope, you can see like based on various instruments we can tell like whatever is blocking it is fairly thin and and wide um unlike like it's not consistent with the rocks you'd expect to be causing this it's not consistent with that kind of dimming and it's also not there's no sort of like collision model as far as i know like anyone can tell me that i'm wrong like dm me like the the uh the journal entry and i'll happily look at the mathematics but the as far as i know there's no mathematical uh sort of model that could explain any sort of collision or or other things that we've got that that could be causing this kind of dimming but i being the the, the pessimist on this is that i'm going to say that it's it's never aliens it never has been aliens it's never aliens and i, I, I would be happy to be wrong but it's never aliens guys just it's never I've, I've, got, yeah, I've, I've got a new conspiracy theory. Um, I'm convinced that NASA, I'm fairly convinced NASA knows this. They've found extraterrestrial life in outer space. Because uh, NASA in the last couple of 
two or three weeks ago. They approached a bunch of um, like priests and clerics and stuff to um, consult. They consulted them to say what would be to ask what would be the best way to introduce. What do they think would be the best way to introduce the news that alien life has been discovered out in space? So my reasoning is why would NASA go to that effort to find out what would be the best way to break the news to the public if they didn't have that news in the first place? I'm still going to go with it's never aliens. I, like, I would love to be proven wrong. But as like, no, my dude, de facto it. position is that it's never aliens. Dude, the, the one thing that can make 2020 a bigger of a shit show than 2021 and 2020 is fucking aliens pitching up. That's, that's literally the only thing that can fuck up next year more than the previous two years have been is aliens. It's never aliens. It never <laughs> has been aliens. It will never be aliens. It's never aliens, guys. Just let it go. It's never aliens. But um, think about this, dude. Humans have been around for how many millions of years? Well, I... I at I've, some I've point, point, at some point, there's going to be a generation that meets aliens. I, I, I yeah, Statistically, probably. it's possible like, I, than us. I'm, I'm the school, I'm of the school of thought that says, um, well, remember, I mean, look, within our lifetimes, within our lifetimes, we will be able to, to, to definitively say with, with, with our telescopes, um, at least within our very local galactic area, we can definitively say if anyone is there or not. Or, and by if anyone is there or not, we, we can definitively say if anyone is there in our galactic neighborhood, they would have had to have been at the same sort of ancient Mesopotamia sort of civilizational uh, spot as we were a million years ago type thing. So if anyone has, because that's the other thing, people forget that, first of all, there needs to be someone there. And second of all, the light still takes millions of years to reach us. So there could be someone there. There could be someone there pitching up now. But we wouldn't know until the light reaching us. So we'll be able to de definitively say within the next couple of decades whether there was anyone there within the last million years or so. So, which isn't great, but it's a start. Again, I'm of the, the school of thought that I think the solution to the Fermi paradox is that we just have there has to be somebody who's the first born. And we happen to be it. Plot twist, we're the ancient race of aliens. We're the firstborn. That's my belief on the Fermi paradox. Uh, I'm, I'm he, torn. You see, I'm torn between that stance of yours and the one that no, there is other civilizations just bloody far away from us. Well, and yeah, either that option, or we're the, first, we're the firstborn in this great cycle. Because remember, great cycles can happen between us and the next civilization to the point where we would never find any sort any, of any, remnants yeah. of them at all. So either we're the firstborn absolutely or we're the firstborn in this particular cycle. Uh, I, I, my big money is on we're the firstborn in this cycle. But the same as we are, um, I think there's a relatively good chance that the current population on Earth, civilization as we know it now in our recorded history and even in our historic, like uh, the fossil records, it's not the first civilization. I think there's a possibility that there was humans before we, there was humans. That's what I'm saying, because fossil records only go back that far. Um, but there's a third possibility, and that's that there's another, good other civilizations in literally other dimensions. So that's also a possibility. Uh other dimensions, or maybe they're just so damn far away. We don't know the limits of the observable universe. We don't know the limits of the unobservable universe. Maybe we're just that sparsely populated in the universe, yeah. intelligent That's life. That so, so my big money is on, on that one. There is other civilizations. But they're just too far away for us to ever make contact or the alternative in another, another dimension, okay. actually one that my, we can't perceive yet. My least favorite one is the computer simulation, partially yeah. because it's just a boring, 
it's a, I mean, there are arguments for it from, a, again, as a computer scientist, I understand there are arguments for it in terms of the cosmic background radiation and the way it sort of hits a certain frequency. It's sort of like the clock speed of a processor. Fine, yeah. whatever. Um, I, I say it's my least favorite partially because I personally find it boring and partially because, again, and I've pointed this out, I know there are people who listen to the show who love the idea of it being a simulation. Uh, partially because it's boring, partially because even in a simulation, if it is a simulation, it means that if if this is as real a simu simulation as possible, then it means it still means that eating food, whether being real or not real food, still makes sense in the simulation. Because if I yes. don't do it in the simulation, then I still starve. So all the same rules apply in the simulation. But And the third, and this is the biggest part of why I hate it as an explanation, is that it's not actually an answer. It just abstracts the questions up one level. Because then the question is like, okay, fine. Then who made, where, where, where did the people who built the simulation come from? Oh, they're in a simulation. At some point, you have to hit a point where somebody's not in a simulation. So it just it just kicks the can down the road. That's it. Not 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 to be sacrilegious or to offend anybody, but it's it's basically the tech version of a religion, of a, de a deity, a creator theory. It's yeah. basically what it is. Um, and that's also why I that. All the reasons you mentioned, and the one that stands out for me the most is that it doesn't make a difference. If it's a simulation, it doesn't make a difference because, like you said, if I don't eat, I starve. If I drive into a wall at 200 miles an hour, I'm dead. So the fact that it's a simulation doesn't change anything. It doesn't explain anything. Exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah. That's my least favorite. And yeah, I mean, there's also like, I actually, it's funny you mentioned that because I, I, I listened to a podcast between Neil deGrasse Tyson and uh, Andrew Clavin. And obviously, you know, I, I sort of, in terms of religious worldview, I sort of f f fall more on Andrew Clavin's my occupation, but that's a whole complex can of worms. But, you know, it was interesting to hear them sit down and talk about this. And, and he did, Clavin put down a point in that, well, there are people in in the scientific community where it's basically scientism. It's it's just it's just like especially with multiverse theory. It's like okay at, at this point at at a certain point now it's just like where we once had had the, the gaps. Like you could say you know as, as you know many religious people were rightly sort of taken to task in saying you know well God did it. I'm like well at what point in saying well the multiverse did it. You know it just so happened in this like it's the same thing under a different name now. There's, there's you know a, taking tea. there's some basic <laughs> with my logic there's some basic evidence that there might be multiverses. Because just if you look at, at yeah. quantum physics, how your electrons and stuff um, act, it, it has like electrons, for instance. That's the one that I always come back to: is where does it go to? They go in little cycles, they disappear, and they come back. Where do they go to when they disappear? You understand what I'm saying? So there's 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 a possibility to it, but um, I think it's probably you, likely. But yeah, but now that you go well, also mm -hmm. multiverse. There's there's different ways of having multiple dimensions but that's a whole whole other can of worms now that you uh, bring up Neil deGrasse Tyson have you heard about the whole hoo-ha about the people trying to get him like ground kicked out of the, the universities and stuff uh what yeah there's a it's a there's a couple of it's mainly female scientists, female uh, females in the uh, women in the STEM field, that are basically trying to get him cancelled effectively because there was allegations of sexual harassment, sexual assault, like longs ago, decades ago, and such a big. Hey, start. my man, and NDG getting the, the the Me Too treatment. Yes, I did. I I think I pissed off about. Our study was about six, like relatively prominent TikTok creators, female TikTok creators that they like specialize in the STEM field, they like in astrophysics and whatnot. Because someone made a comment about, oh, yeah, this lady's like the female Neil deGrasse Tyson, and this one chick just went off on a rot. It's like, yeah, don't compare female. 
women in STEM to Neil deGrasse Tyson. And I'm like, listen, here, I don't follow Neil deGrasse Tyson stuff for his personal life. I follow it for the content that he creates and the stuff that he puts out there. And dude, I just got dogpiled by these women. Absolutely dogpiled. Because I don't, yeah, but like I said, it's the same. On it's TikTok? A, Were you yes. getting dogpiled on TikTok? Yeah, dude. You both, really? I was. I was as flabbergasted on as TikTok you are. of all places. Yes, like in the comic section, they just like pile on you. Like, really? Oh, no. He's a misogynist. He's a re- he's a this. He's like, like, okay, cool. But where's I where's, just, it, where's the police? That where's like the a police? Thing. It does seem very oh, hard. TikTok is rapidly going in that direction. Rapidly going and, like, in that direction. TikTok doesn't seem like that. Maybe because I don't use it as much as you. I was just like, TikTok doesn't seem like the kind of place where that's prominent. I know, it's very prominent. Very prominent. Really? TikTok? Oh, yes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going the same route as most of the other social media platforms. Okay. So, okay. Um, <laughs> interesting that, 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 that. Because, I mean, I don't doubt that there's a subculture for, like a sub TikTok for every culture. I'm just... I'm just yeah. very surprised that it would go that sort of Twitterish route, that Twitterish cancelling. Like I just, yeah. Hey, oh, dude, I mean, they'll go. Anyway, and, sorry, continue. Yeah. It was a, it was the weirdest thing that because I mean, it's not something, and it's not like well known claims against Neil deGrasse Tyson. I mean, I've never heard of it before at all, and I follow quite a I follow a fair amount of him on, on, on the internet. These chicks just went ape shit because someone did not want to cancel it. They, and that's the one thing I don't understand about this whole cancel culture. Let's say like that for instance. Okay, there's allegations of sexual assault against it that happened like 20 or 20, whatever, how long ago. But now you're not allowed to, to enjoy his content, the, the, his work, his professional work. You're not allowed to, to enjoy that because of claims against him personally. One of those weird things that people just can't they can't differentiate between that for some other fucking reason. That is so bizarre. So what it's like what were these like like was it like like honest like did, did they even mention this? Or like mention what happened? Was it like Bill Cosby level stuff or just like no, it's just like, oh, no, this assistant, that there was um, this one assistant that he had years ago made, uh, uh, said that he assaulted her sexu- uh, sexually and the university squashed it and uh, swept, swapped, uh, swept it under the rug and stuff like that. I'm like, okay, this is all hearsay. It's, it's just the, you know, the typical Me Too movement hearsay. Oh, no, he, this person says this 20 years after the fact, that person says that 20 years after the fact, and now all of a sudden we must cancel this, this individual. It's, it's one of those scenarios. They just went ham with it. So there's this weird thing, and I noticed on social media, and so I don't know if you, if you actually notice if it's the same in the university environment itself, but if you get, like, it's like women, for instance, that's in a specific field like STEM, and they're all like grouped together on the social media. They form like a little pack that roam around. Do they? I, yeah. I, I find most most chicks in STEM are actually really chill and cool. The, I, I had the same belief until I until TikTok and I just threw that out the window completely. I, I mean, uh, granted. For obvious reasons, I know very, 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 very few of the, I mean, a lot of my compatriots are, you know, software engineers, computer scientists, engineers, all that kind of mechanical engineers. And of that, the, the female subset is a very small one, granted. So my, 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 I'm, I'm, I'll be the first one to say that my sample size is very small and biased. But from what I've known of them, they're really solid, solid people. Um, and and like so, I said, that's it's the same, same idea I had as well. But I wonder if it's not because because there are so few women in the STEM field that social media allows them to connect across continents. Because this is like 
them in one country. It's like one from America, one from Australia, one from Europe. So it's it's spread out oh, across the globe. I I because I mean, look, here's my thing. I and and this is my stance on this. Like, there is an aspect of the like the. the there's nature seldom deals in extremes. There are aspects of the Me Too movement which I think are good and necessary. I know of you know female friends and all that who have been in situations where like yeah. there are some from some fucking dodgy oaks out there uh, and like there's there's evidence there where we're like okay like if we corroborate stories I'm like oh actually yeah you're right that like based on the evidence we have that yeah there's a solid chance like some shit went down and if we dug deeper we'd probably be able to nail this and you know they they didn't go through with it which is sad because you know you can't go through with it for somebody else you can't sue or, or prosecute for somebody else that you are not the victim so I'm very pro that aspect of it but then obviously the the aspect that you're you, you're discussing is, is, is sort of uh, other sort of their world where there is no forgiveness, which is again ties back into the religion thing. It's almost ironic how how religious the much of the secular left is. Like you're born with this original sin of some type of privilege. Um, except you know in the Abrahamic religions, at least there's some chance at redemption. You yeah. know if you follow thing, you're just born with this original sin of, of of some kind of privilege and if you commit certain other sins there's just no way you can ever be forgiven like no matter what you do all things past present future are just done tainted it is insane uh and like and certain people you know certain celebrities are, are sort of like the high priesthood of this so it's 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 interesting to me like how much despite their you know very sort of sometimes knee-jerk re- 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 rejection of religion is i'm like it's always interesting to me how much they're like i'm like you guys know this is a religion now right this is this <laughs> is a religion now but anyway back to my point of what so there's that aspect of me to ask but the, the the one you're discussing is yeah the one where because i've been in situations where you know i where i've i've seen people like make sort of i've i've, I've had uh, like we had one girl um, uh, at, at a bar type thing make uh, accusations about what a mate of mine said to her, and uh, he absolutely did not say that. We know because all of us were there. We heard it. So did the people, like the other people around her. And uh, that bar happens to have a camera on it. So like she, she like she, she said things like him getting all lecherous on her and rubbing her and all that stuff. Like. First of all, we were all standing there, and second of all, lady, here's the surveillance footage. <laughs> he 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 never even turns to you for more than like half a second type thing, you know. And and then it it was found out later that that other chick um, also uh, screwed over one of her uh, tutors um, who didn't want to like I don't know it was something to do with her grade or whatever, but she basically just claimed that he, he sexually assaulted her and and. And and like somehow, I don't know how, but their texts between each other came out and it became very obvious that she was, she's, you know, not being truthful about this. So because of that, because I've seen both sides of that thing, I, my my general stance at this point is I, I, I take each thing on a case by case uh, basis yeah. to figure out what's going on. Like I, I never rejected out of hand. Like no, the, the the girl's lying or whatever, or the guy's lying. Like I, I take every. I've now reached a point where I take everything on a case by case state. But it's, uh, it's mm-hmm. basis, you, and you have to, you have to take everything on a case by case basis because it's like uh, Jordan Peterson has pointed out a lot of the times. It's easy to say that oh, uh, the majority of rapists are men. Ninety nine percent of rapists are men. Yes, but that's a very, very, very small sub subset of men that's responsible for all the cases. A very small subset. The majority of men don't do that. Just like the majority of men are not in extremely powerful, wealthy positions. It's a very small subset. I mean, right. like I said, it's it's one of those you have to take it by case by case basis. But one thing I've noticed is the second you'll have a movement start and whatever movement it is, it's Me Too movement or BLM with 
lowercase, or whatever. But the second someone starts making money off of it, starts promoting it heavily, it just goes to hell in a handbasket extremely quickly. It just devolves into this festering pile of, like you said, they just there's no redemption, there's no way out of it. If the group decides you are guilty of the, the original sin, then you're screwed. They're not going to let up at all. Yeah. And, it, and in many ways, it's, 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 like I said, it's kind of, it's hard because it's more, more extreme in some religions. It's like, like I said, you, it's like this retroactive slash future active point in time that just yeah, pain. I mean, oh, there's no forgiveness ever. I was like, wow. I mean, and how many of those instances has has there been? I mean, you take look at take Michael Jackson for instance. I mean, they they absolutely crucified him in, in media with the pedophilia accusation accusations and all of that. And if you actually go and dig into it, there's not much evidence at all for any it's, of it. It's claims. funny you should mention it. I I don't know I don't know if you if you ever watch uh, Razor Fist. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Ray, like Razor Fist. Like he's actually a huge Michael Jackson fan. Yeah, he is. Um, yeah, the guy who's into like rock, rock and roll and Judas Priest and all that is also. In, like, I was like, Michael this dude Jackson. did like the deepest dive, dive, dive on the Michael Jackson. I like the Fist is MJ's lawyer, bro. Like this dude just went ham. Um, he did the same with the with the um, Bill Cosby. Thing as well, he did a huge, he did a big rebuttal on the Bill Cosby thing. With Bill, Bill Cosby thing as well. It is the evidence that the, the evidence, quote unquote, that they brought is all hearsay, and uh, this person says this happened, and it, there's no real evidence, and which is to be expected because they're talking about 20, 30 years after the fact, where there's not going to be any evidence left after that many years. There's nothing concrete to work. With. But um, yeah, it's, it's really I, one of those weird phenomena that that cropped up in the last couple of decades. I mean, and it's funny you mentioned the Bill Cosby thing because I, I I keep explaining to people like, look, I think there's there's a chance he's guilty. I'm not a lawyer, but uh, um, Dude, it's Hollywood. Uh, honestly, personally. Personally, I think he probably he probably did it. Like personally, I think he probably did it. But the reason he got acquitted is not. I keep trying to. I I I, I think he probably did it because like I don't know. My man's he he's got that slippy Mr. Happy jersey on. I don't know, bro. But anyway, the what I'm actually trying to get to is what people forget is that he actually got acquitted because of the process of the trial. He wasn't yeah. declared innocent or guilty. He was acquitted because of the process of the yeah. trial. And that's why it was thrown out. The other thing that, that I've speaking also, of which is is, Gil- is Ghislaine Maxwell still alive? Uh, yes, surprisingly, yes, she is. Um, we haven't heard of um, oh. Snowden in a while, um, but he's yeah. He, that that case is the Grizzle, uh, Maxine Griswold case is extremely quiet in the media. Yeah, quite funny about that. Suspiciously quiet. And all of a sudden, no, uh, there's no reporters allowed in the courtrooms because it's just the information is just too, too much for the public to handle. Interesting how that goes. But anyway, yeah. But yeah uh, Snowden, they, they, um, the UK courts uh, cleared Snowden for extradition to the states. Wait, you mean Assange? Oh yeah, Julia. Oh, Assange. Yeah, sorry, not Snowden. Assange. Assange yeah. Um. Wait, didn't he? Didn't that happen a while ago, though? No, no, no. The, was that? It's like two weeks ago. Maybe. They said okay. Yeah, um. They they said no. He has to be extradited to the U.S. And then his legal team appealed, and he had he had some sort of medical stroke or, or something that happened to him while he was in prison yeah so he's still fighting not to go back to the to the states which is i can't it's just uh, another one of those things where something's not, something's not sitting right with that whole deal 
Hmm. Interesting. I'm, I'm just going to hop on and, and say neither Assange didn't kill himself, Maxwell didn't kill himself, Epstein didn't kill himself, and our boy John McAfee didn't kill himself. <laughs> Yeah, and yeah, it's it's almost a year now, eh? Yeah. Kind of almost almost coming up. When was it? March. Yeah, I was actually I was talking to someone who was actually at a Libertarian Party conference with him, and apparently, like one of the first things he did was like order like like a a crate of of whiskey and like and, and strippers for. <laughs> For the loud, like, that's that's the most John McAfee thing I can imagine. Uh, oh. Like, really, just the 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 liquor and the strippers, no cocaine. I'm assuming that came like half an hour later. Uh, that, that he really was a, a an epic character, if there ever was. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anything else anyway. on your side? No, I think that's that's it. I think we've got it. A bumper episode this 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 week, yeah. so I'll get to work chopping that together. So yeah, um, I I guess the the only thing left is to like usually we let the guests like plug their stuff, but maybe <laughs> you want to plug your Twitter or whatever. I don't I don't I don't really really yeah. mind at this point. Yeah, no, Odin is is rather quiet these days in the social medias, but yeah, uh, you are. I'm mostly work. busy. I, yeah, I, yeah. I I I actually like have so much stuff to do in my life at this point. It's just like I I I log on now and I see like some meme on Twitter and I'm like, I have no idea what this means. Like the the, <laughs> the, the, the the amount of reference points in a single like tweet or meme, I'm just like, uh, okay, oh, huh? Getting out of touch now. Yeah, like it's it's crazy how much like just doing stuff like offline i i know that's the meme but like doing stuff <laughs> offline is it, it just makes it so much more difficult to just understand memes like because we've reached the point where it's like the velocity at which like memes come through is just so high it's like uh if you're not like cutting yeah. the edge then you're done for and, and and you know what some in some cases i found out later what happened and i'm like you know what i'm kind of I'm kind of glad that I wasn't present for this. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of. Yeah. But yeah, as always, at, you're at, at Wotan underscore ZA and at the No Strip Show, and I'm at Martin Maniac. So yeah. I don't you know if it's see? actually got the, if it's, if it's actually got an underscore edit. Oh, uh, it's actually just Wotan ZA. Oh, uh, Wotan ZA, yeah. And then at yeah. No Strip I'm at, at Martin Maniac. And um, if, you guys listening, please help me convince uh, Rotan to go to a Monster Jam. It would be much appreciated. We must get him there. When in uh, Rome. I guess like if, if like they offer me like like some sort of uh, buxom chested southern girlfriend, then I <laughs> then I'll have to go. Uh, that's my new thing now. That's my thing now. Southern gals. Like that's that's I'm I'm gonna have to look up I'm gonna to have to look up some some very 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 distant relatives in Alabama and see what I can make make happen. Some southern <laughs> gals. That's 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 what does it for me now. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> All right. Cool. Cheers, Until guys. Next time.